The final case in managing the complex patient involves drug interaction considerations. Here are my disclosures as required by the organizers. This case involves a 59 year old man with a long history of HIV infection who is heavily treatment experienced. He has an undetectable viral RNA and a CD4 count of 258 and he is referred from the urology clinic for advice about a drug regimen for prostatic hypertrophy and urethral obstruction. He was previously healthy except for gastroesophageal reflux disease, a history of depression, and a history of sexually transmitted infections. His current antiretroviral regimen is etrovirine 400 milligrams per day, darunavir 800 milligrams per day, Cobisostat 150 milligrams per day, and dalyotegravir 50 milligrams per day. He is also taking omeprazole 20 milligrams per day, a Maalox antacid 30 cc's as needed, sertraline 50 milligrams per day for depression, and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, which was left over from the days when his CD4 count was less than 200. So in what ways is this a complex antiretroviral regimen? Although this is a complex antiretroviral regimen, I would say it's not unusual for someone in this country who is heavily treatment experienced. However, it raises a number of questions. The first is, can dalyotegravir and etrovirine be co-administered without dose modification? Etrovirine 200 milligrams twice per day reduces concentrations of dalyotegravir, specifically the trough concentration, by a mean of 88%, quite a large reduction. And co-administration of these two drugs is contraindicated, except in the presence of darunavir and ritonavir, which reverses the inducing effects of etrovirine on dalyotegravir clearance. Presumably, the combination of darunavir and cobisostat would have the same effect, although it has never been studied. An additional question is whether giving etrovirine 400 milligrams once per day has the same uh, interaction with dalyotegravir as the 200 milligram twice a day dose. And as we will see, I think the answer to that is probably yes. The second question is whether darunavir and cobacistat and etrovirine can be administered without dose modification. We know that etrovirine, 400 milligrams once a day, reduces the cobacistat concentrations, specifically reducing trough concentrations by an average of 66%. And as a consequence, reduces darunavir concentrations specifically reducing the darunavir trough by 56%. Co-administration of these two drugs is therefore not recommended. However, this is based strictly on the drug concentrations in a pharmacokinetic interaction study in healthy volunteers, and no large clinical studies of this combination in HIV-infected patients have been reported. Finally, should etrovirine be administered in treatment experienced patients at a dose of 400 milligrams once per day? We know that the FDA approved regimen is 200 milligrams twice per day. However, the long half-life of etrovirine, which is 30 to 40 hours, should support once daily dosing. And in fact, the SENSE trial showed that 400 milligrams of etrovirine given once per day plus NRTIs was equally efficacious as compared to efavirenz 600 milligrams per day plus NRTIs. What about giving these drugs with proton pump inhibitors and antacids? Does omeprazole or Maalox alter the absorption of any of the drugs in this regimen? Fortunately, proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole, even though they can reduce the absorption of several antiretroviral formulations, would not be expected to affect any of the drugs in this patient's regimen. However, 
Malox, a magnesium containing antacid, has divalent cations that can bind to dolutegravir in the intestinal tract and prevent its absorption. And they should only be administered two hours before or six hours after dolutegravir, which this patient was not aware of. This is an example showing the reduction in dolutegravir concentrations given when the dolutegravir is given at the same time as an antacid in the green curve, or when the antacid is given two hours later in the blue curve, showing the significant benefit of separating the antacid, the magnesium containing antacid from the dolutegravir. What should we do about the sertraline in this regimen? Well, sertraline is mainly a cytochrome P450 2D6 substrate. We know that etravirine is a weak cytochrome P450 2D6 inducer, and it could modestly decrease concentrations. Darunavir cobisostat, on the other hand, is a weak cytochrome P450 2D6 inhibitor and therefore could in theory increase concentrations, although it's probably not potent enough to do so. The clinical impact overall on this patient's sertraline concentrations is um, unclear, although clinical impact is unlikely. But you would monitor for sertraline effic efficacy and increase the dose if needed to control this patient's depression. Finally, we would not expect any, act, any interactions between these drugs and dietegravir, which is neither a 2D6 inhibitor nor inducer. The urology clinic would like to start this patient on a combination of tamsulosin, 0.4 milligrams per day, and finasteride, 5 milligrams per day. Are there any problems adding these two drugs to this patient's complex antiretroviral regimen. What about combining medications for prostatic hypertrophy with antiretrovirals? Can finasteride be safely administered with dolutegravir, etravirine, and darunavir cobisostat? Well, finasteride is a cytochrome P450-3A4 substrate but etravirine is a cytochrome P450 inducer and could decrease the concentrations of this drug. On the other hand, darunavir cobisostat is a 3A4 inhibitor and could increase the concentrations of this drug. The clinical impact is uncertain given the counteracting nature of these two interactions, but you should monitor this patient for finasteride efficacy and perhaps unexpected toxicity, especially impotence as a side effect of this drug. Finally, no interactions expected with dolutegravir, which is neither a 3A4 inducer nor inhibitor. Can tamsulosin be safely administered with dolutegravir, etravirine, and darunavir cobisostat? Tamsulosin is also a cytochrome P450-3A4 substrate, as well as a minor 2D6 substrate. Etrovirine is an inducer of both of these enzymes and could, in theory, decrease concentrations of this drug. But darunavir cobisostat is an inhibitor and could increase concentrations of this drug. Historically, tamsulosin has been safely administered with other cytochrome P450-3A4 and 2D6 inhibitors, but it is an alpha-1A antagonist, and it could therefore cause orthostatic hypotension and lower blood pressure, especially in older patients. In this situation, the clinical impact is uncertain, but you should monitor for efficacy and unexpected toxicity, especially postural hypotension. 
the bottom line is to start with the lowest possible dose, which is what the urology clinic has recommended, 0.4 milligrams per day and monitor the patient closely. Of course, no interaction here expected with dalutegravir, which is neither a, a cytochrome P450 inducer nor inhibitor. Finally, although the drug, potential drug interactions in this case were quite complicated, and there were many of them, don't forget to take advantage of readily available authoritative resources to help you make decisions in a case like this. Much of the information I shared with you today was taken from the Liverpool Drug Interactions website, hivdruginteractions.org. It is updated frequently and the recommendations in that, uh, in that web resource are backed up by published literature whenever possible.